in my own lifetime i'm at a stage when i'm seeing that life is now going to be reconstructed we are at a phase of total reconstruction and it's difficult reconstructing it's easier constructing where you can build freshly the boundaries the foundations the architecture but to demolish a bani banai building pulling out the whole foundations redesigning it removing the debris takes you much longer in my lifetime i'm seeing a whole need for reconstruction whether it is in human life and whether it's in public life whether it's in administration even in home life personal life the way we thought the way we managed the way we dressed the way we traveled the way we ate the way we related with each other the way we shopped the way we spent it's a whole reconstruction as i said reconstruction is tougher than construction because when you constructing you you looking at the whole enthusiasm of constructing something but when you reconstructing there's a stress to first undo and then do today it's a life of undoing and doing undoing what we had become greedier by nature so will we be able to reduce our greed we'd become highly competitive will we be able to reduce our competitive spirit we'd become ruthless will we be able to reduce that ruthlessness we'd become highly selfish highly selfish will be able to be able to accommodate each other in the coming reconstruction we'd been certain aspects of our public life had become terribly dishonest terribly dishonest will we be able to bring back integrity we are suffering because of this excess excess of speed excess of consumption we all have more than we needed we all have more than we needed will we be able to look within our needs only and give away give away or not take what we don't need we were not we were taking more than we were giving in our lives in public administration it was career centric not purpose centric career centric where does my career go where does my next tra- promotion come where am i going to get posting now will i get a will i get all the creature comforts not at what my purpose of the service is will i be able to come back to become purpose centric rather than remain career centric then my bank balance how much is my bank balance and how many balances i have how many which all countries have i traveled in where all did i spend a holiday it's the lockdown which is telling us that we all can be as a family have a holiday within don't have to be traveling overseas to have a holiday we can have a holiday here i think it we are at a stage of tremendous rebuilding and reconstruction we are looking at rehistory we are rewriting our history whatever was done till yesterday i look it as history a chapter of history it has to be freshly designed freshly worked freshly addressed freshly learned social distancing there's no hugging anymore for couple of couple of time there's no hugging but it's feeling now physical distance has to replace heartful dis- felt feeling physical distance to absolutely social integrity where we genuinely feel for each other even if you're away 2 meters away dogas as our prime minister says dogas even if it's dogas we can be we can be kinder we can be caring we can be honest and lies must replace the amount of lies one reads listens hears how much time do you spend refuting them we are this coronavirus or this covid 19 if it does not 
restructure our lives, rethink our lives, transforms our value systems. And then health was not wealth. Wealth, wealth was more important. We thought we could buy health. I think the biggest lesson of this uh, virus is today is health, is wealth. Not wealth is health. You cannot buy health with the wealth. But you can earn wealth with health. How much were we spending on health? Look how we were privatizing our health structure, which was putting, and then we were bringing in programs of insuring and providing insurance thanks to our current policies of our current government. We were trying to give that final insurance policy to everybody. But it took us so long. What about the infrastructure? What about the shortage of medical colleges? The creation, why did we restrict ourselves from opening more medical colleges? The opening up has started only last two years. I've seen this in my own life. Why could every general hospital be linked with a nursing home, be a nursing home, be a hospital, and have more students learn more medicine or the nursing health workers? Why should India have had a shortage of doctors and nursing? Why? Why did we create this short shortage? And let certain deemed universities ex charge exorbitant fee. Exorbitant fee. I fought this issue right in Pondicherry, friends. I fought it. It's still two years ago. These, some of these private medical colleges are extorting money from intelligent students. Extorting money till we fought a battle, took them to the court, and thanks to the Supreme Court, that it's got capped, and the Madras High Court. But they were extorting money. How many can afford? Why did we create these shortages? And today, we need every health worker and every doctor on the road. It's agonizing. We've lost so much. We earned, some of us have earned all that we did through such a hard way. We've all been punished together. We've all gone back to primary school of life. Why should some of us have suffered when we didn't deserve it? If some, those of us who lived the honest way, why should we have suffered? But that's the, that's the bane and bonus of global world and global society. You all become one in sorrows and joys. And some of us who didn't deserve it are a part of it. We're all suffering too. Today, the world is suffering together. It has now to grow back together. The whole world, rich or poor, all have gone back to the primary school of learning humanity. Humanity lessons are being learned today for equal everybody, rich or poor, white or black, or British, whoever. North or South, East or West, all of them have become equal and yet divided because we can't afford to yet cross cross trans transatlantic because we might infect each other. Now we are at a stage where we first have to protect ourselves to protect the other. So it's our responsibility now to protect ourselves to protect the other. And the others, why is the, there is a mask? Why is there a mask? Why is there a mask? Why is there is a mask? Why there is a mask today? So that when I speak, I don't infect you. And when you speak, you don't infect me. Why do I have a mask? Why did I need it? Because I was infecting the other. By lies, by loud voice, loud, loud voice, violence. I was violent. Humanity had turned violent. I do not know in the coming months and years whether we will re reverse this trend. But Indian spirituality has to come to the fore, where it makes a, you a better human being. You may be a Hindu, Muslim, or a Sikh, or a Parsi, or anybody, or a Christian. If you're a human, good human being, you've lived up to the teachings of the saints. But if that made you dogmatic, and made you more self-centered, made you more angry, greedy, competitive, and careless, and more rights-oriented, then you're only reading your spiritual book. You're not emerging as a great human being. I think the Indian spirituality of humanity needs to come to the fore. The yoga of India needs to come to the fore, just as Indian namaste 
has come to the fore and not shake hands. Masculine shake hands. Not masculine shake hands. The gentle namaste where I bow to the divinity within you and you bow to the divinity within me. This is Indian civilization, Indian spirituality. How do we bet better human beings before we think of accumulation, acquisition, consumption? It's time to collaborate and have a collective will. Collective will in peace, harmony and humanity. It's time for humanity to return and become recognized. Media must start recognizing humanity rather than glamour only. Rather than only show and colour and noise, but it looks at composure, peace, giving, where people give rather than take only. So friends, it's, it's a time for total reconstruction of life. And all of us, wherever we are, we are back to square one. Learn the elementaries of human life and living, which we had forgotten. And today, we are suffering collectively. It's like the common air we breathe. It's the pollution, the way we exploited the Mother Earth, the environment, the air, the water, the natural resources. We thought we were their masters. Their master has taught us, no, we were slaves. If we were abusing air, we were abusing water, if we were abusing this Mother Earth soil, we were abusing our trees and fruits and the flora and the fauna, and we were abusing animals. We were eating them raw. We were eating them raw. And if this virus has come through that kind of eating, who's going to stop this? Who's going to stop it? We're going to get it again. Maybe in our next generation. And I think I, we need to think, should we produce a next generation? If this is not going to change, should we bring in a next generation to suffer another kind of pandemic, another kind of coronavirus? I'm not too sure. I think we may even rethink where the humanity, a, a mother should be producing children of tomorrow to suffer the way we all the world is suffering. I think every mother would probably rethink when she's producing a child, what is the, what does the, what lies ahead for the child? If we are not going to leave a better world for our children, I think we really, really need to rethink the way we relive our lives. If we want the humanity and mankind to continue to grow and multiply, it's the own, the responsibility is on us today, how we craft the lives ahead for the next generation. So it's life for reconstruction, rebuilding, a new architecture. We, the choice is in our hands, but it's not the choice in individual hands anymore. It's the choice in the hands of the parents, the teachers, the public servants, the politicians of the day. The preachers, it's in their hands. The experts, the activists, what do they want? What kind of world do you want? It's a collective, everybody has a role to play. We need to rethink. It's time for reflection and proper action. And then co-creation and true creation. Thank you.